exposure, you know, the intercommunication that is happening across uh, the, you know, the regions, the continents. That is one factor where the policies, even today when we talk about the implementation of technologies, we talk about working in silos and things like that. So we still talk about regulations have to be there. Unless the regulations are there, uh, it cannot be implemented. Unless the policies are driven, we cannot have net metering. So we, we as a human, uh, human uh, being or a human animal, as was told, we are driven by policies. We want somebody to drive us, right? So the, dr the drive comes from that aspect. And why that has come is because of more of the awareness. And when we say environment, it is not only the air we breathe. It's part of the ecosystem, the ecological balance that we need to maintain. Because while over the period we, we, we have, you know, the uh, extinction of uh, the breeds, uh, the other breeds, and, you know, the uh, increase of human uh, community, it may happen that human himself will extinct one day. Because if that balance is not maintained, only human cannot survive. So that is another point. So these can be the drivers and uh, whether the technology can make it sustainable. Already we had you know, two questions coming up in, in the whole day session. One is what is going to happen to the, you know, the uh, PV panels that we installed today? What happens after 20, 25 years? What is the method for the waste management or the disposal of these PV systems? Similarly, when we talk about storage, how do you dispose of batteries? So whether we are creating another problem uh, for 30 years here, from here, so, as a technologist or as a human being, it's always that when we try to solve one problem, for our own existence, we may have to create another problem so that we find a solution over the period of time. So, that is what we call maybe, you know, evolution of technology. So, today when we say, you know, we have PVs, we have batteries, maybe after 15, 20 years, we may say that, you know, there is another technology like Mr. Nagraj was telling in the morning. So, this might be a no, research area which may have a solution after 10, 15 years where we may try to address this problem. So, it's be, but one thing what good is happening is that, that proactive thought has come in today. When electricity was invented, maybe it was not thought that this is going to, you know, um, create a problem 100 years uh, after. And it's not only in electricity, we talk about telecom. Telecom was just born, I mean, okay, not the, uh, not the, the handset telephone, but the mobile phones at least was born maybe 10, 15 years back in the more popular way. But even though it was, it, it was born more recently or in, we can call it as a millennium birth, but what, is it totally uh, environment friendly? No, we know about the towers that is creating problem to the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, to the bird species. So it is not like, I know, whether a particular technology or system is existing for over years, whether it is going to, you know, address um, in a particular uh, uh, problem, but it's always the awareness, the, 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 the thought, thought process, and the community as engineers and scientists and, you know, the, uh, um, the, the people who are, you know, uh, in, the, in the area. So it's the thought process that is going to be there, and the more proactive thought it is there, it, we can prevent it, prevent a problem from happening. So like for example, if CCTV is there, we are not stopping the crime, but we can detect, you know, when a crime happens, it can be easily detected. Of course, people talk about prevention of crime also, but still it cannot be zero percent. Similarly, a technology implemented today cannot be, you know, 100 percent guarantee or anything. Else. So that would be my, my uh, maybe a brief talk. Very short. Okay. Now, I'll just talk about two things. Why do we need technology? Technology was, I don't think that this level of technology was there some, some years back. And we are continuously trying to get into another level of technology, technology 1.0, 2.0, 4.0, and it will go on. We, as a human being, went to technology because of the issues that we are facing. Consider the smart city. Why do we need smart city? We don't need smart city actually. If all the departments talk to each other, if the maintenance of the roads, services are taken place properly, why do you need? If the information is getting transmitted between the departments, if our quality of life is good, why do you need smart city? Why do you need any of the technologies? You don't need these technologies at all. 
with the sheer reason of population that has increased and it is we that we are not able to handle the services to our own people we need someone to help us now someone can't be a god who can help us we need something that can help us so we are taken a help of technology to help so that we can run the show in a way now coming to the uh, sir you it is i would like to visit your house because being an architect uh, uh, I, i think um, louis baker houses uh, earlier used to be like this and i also remember my house in my native place where we never used to have acs refrigerators it was one simple fan which used to run sometime and other and most of the most of you would have seen that time also now that time was a single story house at the most double story then it would be a wooden ramp that's it the moment you want to get into a multi story building to manage these many population this population in a multi story building it is not possible it's not impossible i'm sorry it is still possible but with a cost now there are buildings multi story buildings that have been developed with a concept of using least energy and that's why this green building concept is there in place so that can you use the energy from the outside and then reuse it for your thing uh, a simple example is you would have taken flats in so many buildings in those buildings if you see one flat another flat all the flats are of same size same design same orientation whereas as per the architecture the orientation of flat depends on the sun path and the wind direction who follows hardly few so what happens it actually the implication is on the use of energy you use more energy you use ac uh, if your orientation of your house is proper and you have the wind circulation proper you don't need ac but it is just because of the commercialization and misuse of the things being a government department or a builder or we as a people we misuse our things that's why we go to some or the other maybe the technology type of thing or something to help us out so what i would like to conclude is that if there is a sincerity in us optimization in usage of things and a balanced approach towards be it energy or any other thing then i think you don't need to get into so many uh, discussions on green non green misuse use it is all depends on us what we decide thank you thank you so can i use the same mic can i use this mic uh i do not want uh, it's been a day long of they they filled with lots of slides so i do not want to say anything more about it but uh, let me just see if i can quickly show you some slides uh if only the technology allows me to complete it within a minute that's what i promised well, it doesn't seem to work works okay Now there's only one thing that I just uh, please bear with me. Yeah, uh, there are only two to three slides that I just wanted to basically show, and uh, the whole thing has to be within the framework of a, something like a minute, a minute and a quarter, if I might possibly put it like that. So let's let's try and say, well. we are not averse to technologies in fact technologies have it it's only precisely because we were living in a community of 5 and then it suddenly became 5 to the power of n that we started uh, uh, thinking of the fact that well things are not complex but it is becoming very complicated in a sense so you have to manage an entire community of 5000 people and then you need technologies to basically do the dumb job which otherwise could have been managed by a a, a nice person willing to do it so all these technologies in fact are smart but they are doing the dumb job of trying to 
fix the mess that we created by multiplying phi by 1,000. That's the basis of what really happened. Well, without much ado, what really happens is we are in a state at this point of time. This is how you possibly have modeled it. But then what happens is that ever so slight push to this state would keep this whole thing going down like a roller coaster. And then you know that anyone who has actually gone down a roller coaster would probably uh, say that it has never been very pleasant. Well, you can always say that I was brave and I didn't cry or I didn't shout, but then there will be evidence to show uh, things otherwise. So essentially what we intend to do is we don't want to have such kind of a roller coaster ride. And roller coaster rides generally are not very pleasant indeed. It's indeed a nasty state, and that's what I really want to say. So I'll skip this slide, but anyone who probably can read this particular equation can say that this is the Sicilian banking system. So essentially, the equation looks very simple, very predictable, but then what happens is over a couple of tens of iterations, your prediction goes haywire. So can I say with some confidence that all the models that we do to basically implement the kind of technologies that we have today are at best good for a few iterations and before anything happens, things really go haywire. And this is what we call as deterministic chaos. And we all know, like what my esteemed colleague happened to say, that it is not about managing five people, it is about managing 5,000 people, which is really complicated. So complicated systems are chaotic, they're deterministic, but they're very chaotic. Now, do you want to meddle with a system like this? And if you have to meddle with it, you better be aware of the fact that you are going to have a roller coaster ride. And if roller coaster ride is enjoyable, like what Mr. Bean usually <laughs> pretends to be on his usual serials, then I think we should enjoy it. But if we don't like it, then we should think otherwise. So that is what I really meant. So this is another thing which says the same thing, but I do not want to go into that particular part. So what can save us from such kind of problems? The only thing that we should possibly be able to think of is to see if we will be able to change slowly, reduce the rate, and then possibly be a little happy too. Now, quickly, I will skip this slide as well. Anyone who wants to read the slide later on can please help me with their email IDs. I'll pass it on to them. So one thing that I would love to say is we always love to conserve something, conserve energy, smart way of using it in a way in which we are frugal, like what Sir told, 10 times reduction in the way in which we consume can really help. So what is it that we want to conserve? There are a lot many things over here. I'll run through it. But there is one thing that you might say we all agree with in this entire block called energy. You might say, why do we have to bring all these things into a forum of IEEE and more so into PES? Because energy needs are influenced by our habits. And habits, you might please agree with me, you might probably be able to agree with me that all these things influence habits in one way or the other. And they all are interconnected. And that is what I would love to say. So you pull one of them, there is a good way by which you can always say that you're gonna pull another. And that is what complicated system is all about. So here, we are trying to basically do the impossible by trying to say that I'll have a smart city because we are trying to influence the moods of people. And the only thing that we have here is a regulatory measure that we might possibly have to some extent, and then possibly the cost factor which will influence the way in which my needs will be programmed. I think that's a big judgment to make, but I'm not sure how much of that can be really done. But yes, hope that we can do it. So let's, this is something that I see mostly when I work in Western Ghats. I would love to share with all of you that I am also a filmmaker, a wildlife filmmaker at that. And whenever I go to a wildlife uh, site, there will be one village, they call it Podu or whatever there, with four or five houses, and there will be one 11 kV line which basically promises to say that we will have electricity. They said by 2012, everything will be electrified, and they say everything is electrified now, but there will be not much electricity to light up even a single lamp there because that 11 kV line or probably that 440 volts line will never be energized in its lifetime. There's not much energy for them to have. Now, the consequence of having such kind of an energy distribution system is to have such kind of linear, in, linear pollution. We don't speak about this in IEEE and PES4 because we are too afraid to speak about our own fallacies of networks. Well, it is 
it, it's better to accept it rather than to shy away from it at some point of time. And I take liberty to say something which is a little orthogonal. I'm not against, I'm not averse to energy. If this laptop is charged, it's because of this distribution system. So let me not fight shy of the fact that I am a beneficiary of a system which I am trying to basically look at, have a relook at, if I can. Now, essentially what happens is the microgrids, what such, Sir happened to suggest, seems to be a much better system because such kind of linear intrusions do not have to come in the way of human development indices. Human development indices can really coexist with the microgrids supporting them to be so. Yeah, so that's one part. Now, cement industry happens to guzzle away a lot of energy. Sir Apple happened to say that we are guzzlers of energy, and I think if you look into some of the primary indices where we are guzzling away a lot of energy, it's because we are trying to build and build and build. There seems to be no ending of how much we are trying to build in a city like Bangalore or probably any other city which is trying to compete with us. But then if you look at this particular house, it has not been plastered. Of course, he mentioned a very famous name, Laurie Baker more about it in some of the books that I have got, I can share it with you. But this building does not require painting, so you don't have to buy paint. Any from, anyone from the paint industry, I'm going to run away before you throw something at me. No cement for plastering, which means that you have been able to reduce cement by mostly like 40 to 50 percent, and this building probably does not even have a lot of RCC structure in it. So that kind of reduces the steel consumption by 40 percent. And more than anything else, this building does not require any kind of forced cooling or forced heating mechanisms, especially in a place like Bangalore. I can't say the same thing in Jaisalmer, but I can say that in a place like Bangalore, where we are blessed with the best weather. Not the kind of slide that you again see in an IEEE PES meeting, <laughs> but this milk is boiled, uh, is put, into, uh, put on a stove, which is basically supported by something like this. Now, that's the basis of what I was trying to basically say, and I would like to end my presentation with this. Plurality is something that we should possibly look for. If there is an alternate way by which you will be able to generate energy, and this is not a huge plot, sir. This can be done in a 2030 site. This can be done in a 2030 site, which is like 600 square feet of area. Now, plurality of energy sources can definitely cut down the amount of energy that we use from one particular monolithic source, and definitely puts a lot, I'm again not averse to technology, and that is what I would love to say. I think I abuse technology more than anyone else probably do in my age. I can vouch for that. Being a filmmaker, I can say that. <laughs> I think I charge more batteries than all of you put together here do. I carry much more energy consum consuming devices with me than all of you put together here do in an year. I can vouch for that. And I'm not boasting of that. That's the kind of human being that I am here. But here I am trying to basically convince you that all my energy needs need not come from the grid. It can come from other alternate sources of energy where there is some kind of a guarantee that it's not completely generated from external inputs. It can be generated from what is traditionally accepted as waste. Now, all, we do all this, sir. We do all this, sir, because today my house probably boasts of trees which have not been planted by me. And there are ecosystem services which we will have to definitely honor. And these kind of birds will come visiting your house. Uh, whether Magolo Janaki comes or not at 9.30, I do not know. <laughs> but I'm sure these things will chirp definitely in your, you know, at your morning. When you're having tea and coffee, you'll definitely have some of these kind of beautiful birds. Not this, not this though. But definitely some things like this will definitely keep visiting your neighborhood. So thanks for that. I'm not sure if I overshot my presentation, which I always do, but. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. So I think uh, my questions have resonated a lot in all the panelists. So now I would like to uh, ask the audience if you want to resonate uh, for my questions. Uh, one thing I have to add, for uh, living beings, we need air and we need light. And if these two energies are not there, I think, uh, what about living beings? That is the main question. 
Miss, <laughs> I am asking again. Because your question is ki if that energy will extinct, what we will be the next energy? But I think uh, if there is no any living beings, because if there is no any solar, means heat, oxygen, wind means, what will be about living being? No, but that's the best part no, of no, human no. being that human being will find out some or the other way to sustain its own life. No, actually we are finding out these things only on uh, Mars and all that things. Okay, if the human beings can be sustainable temperature and sustainable oxygen and all. So if it is not there, then what will be the next energy source? I think means it will be there. Uh, About uh, five years back, IEEE Power and Energy Society, we conducted one uh, sustainable energy conference. Anybody? There I spoke about Panchabhuta, five elements, okay? That is, we have extracted from the geoenergy, that is a boo, then from AAP, that is water, from Vayu, and also the thermal energy, that is actually the Agni, okay? Therefore, the one element what we have not touched. Okay.